Hey guys, welcome back. What a day. As you can see here. <laughs> Market just closed and this thing's just going. Going, going, going. Before you get FOMO and jump into something that you don't have conviction on, you haven't done your own due diligence on, and you don't have capital to spend it on, whatever you put in the market, expect to lose it. If you're losing sleep or this or that, you put too much into your play. You gotta have a long term first, but I'm gonna show you what we did with Rocket. Um, we've been calling this out for, I mean, I didn't have a price target. I don't do price targets. I have no idea of price targets. But we've been calling, I mean, I've been into Rocket since way back here. I bought it in right here at the high. Bought it in here, never pumped it. Uh, bought in here for earnings. They had earnings and then came down. I've just held shares. Long term account, long term shares, what I tell people. Long term, long term, long term. Once you have long term, 90% of it, long term, safe plays. Long term is not an XPEV and, you know, stuff you've never heard of or never used. It's stuff that you think will be here in 10 years that you like. Um, I'm familiar with Rocket Mortgage. I liked it. So I held through it. We sold some premium through here. You can see it was in this range just for so long. So it's pretty easy. Right about here in January, we I picked up some calls because um, of earnings, and I know housing housing is going crazy. Cost of housing uh, is super high. They're getting crazy. Ten percent house uh, growth year over year. Cost of houses. Some places in Southern Florida are like doubling the house prices in one year because everyone from New York and all these cities are moving down south. Um, so yeah, basically picked up some calls. And it was at the lowest. So I was like, all right, well, it's been trending this for months. So at least at any rate, it'll come here. These bumps right here, this was the GameStop kind of gamma squeeze, the first bump on GameStop. It hit it, hit, it hit Rocket also. So it hit a lot of stuff. But uh, yeah, so they went up a bunch of value then, and then they kind of came down. Um, and I kind of kept sit, sitting on them. Uh, and then on our YouTube channel, we've been calling out uh, for a few days now and on our Twitter. Um, what's going on with Rocket Mortgage and even here because they had earnings this this was their earnings announcement right here shot up and then had this pullback during the day and I was telling people at this point when I hit this low I said you should buy in now uh, for the long term I wasn't even saying for a quick option flip or quick growth I was saying for long term because this this is what I like the long term and they wondered what you know what's a good one for long term I was like well this one they had good earnings it came down I think it's still got a lot of room but at this point, I didn't know these different catalysts that could make this thing go crazy. Um, the short float interest was almost 40%, which we mentioned um, on the video on this day, the 26th. Or even earlier, uh, you can go back. And then uh, they're having a big buyback program. Most of the shares held are from people inside that, uh, the, that work at Rocket Mortgage. So... Basically, the short float interest is, uh, yeah, it has great potential. But the catalyst was, um, the thing to set it off was the good earnings and then them announcing the dividend. So those two things allowed it to start coming up and start getting some uh, steam. Once it gets steam on a short squeeze, uh, yeah, that's when it kind of starts happening. So um, basically with a, with a dividend, of one dollar and eleven cents per share most of that money is going to go to them because they own the shares they own most of the shares so all that does is forces the short sellers they're gonna to have to pay that dividend if they don't cover which, which isn't a huge deal however many you know 40 million um it's much much less maybe than the losses that they would get if they covered their position depending on when they cover and depending on where their shorts uh they got their shorts in it um so yeah here's here's rocket today uh, this could be just the beginning. I don't know. I mean, if you've just gotten into the market, you think this is normal. This stuff that's gone on with GameStop this is totally abnormal. So to think, oh, this, you know, this, this is at 43. It'll probably be at 400 in a couple days. That's highly unlikely, and I don't see that happening. Uh, but yeah, now that we've witnessed GameStop and kind of what can happen, um, I don't. I have no idea. But I have exposure to it, and that's all you can really do. Um, so I'll show you what we we had calls here. So our long term is a long term account, and I at one point I did have some options in here, but mostly this is shares that I never touch. I just buy in. I never sell in here. Um, and Rocket, we've owned Rocket for a long time. Average cost of twenty eight dollars. Like I said, we bought it right before earnings. 
Um, and yeah, now we're finally up on these shares. We've been down on these shares for months, you know, thousands of dollars, but we just held and we believed in the company and had conviction and it's, yeah, it's paying out now. It doesn't pay out with all of them, but uh, you stick to it and holding is, uh, holding is the way you make money. Warren Buffett says it best. The stock market is the transition of wealth from the impatient to the patient. You want to make money quick? Go work hourly at McDonald's or somewhere you can get a paycheck at the end of the week or two weeks or a month. The stock market's not a place for that. You will make money quick, sure, here and there, but you're going to end up losing it. It's uh, you got you to be patient with it. So get a long term. Um, these calls are up. Let's see, these are up 1,100% today. So that's sick. And uh, yeah, it's on our long term. So this, this will just go into my buying power and I'll just slowly add to different uh, different ones of our long-term uh, plays that we have, depending on where they're priced at and that sort of thing. So not gonna gamble with this money, um, but it's still unrealized, so you never know. This could tank tomorrow. So what I did, uh, since that's the case, I had six of them and I sold one earlier today for $1,235. So this play is totally covered. It costs 700 something dollars um, for all six back in January, as you can see. We were buying them. Let me show you this. So February, I was scaling into it. So started buying them here. January fifth, bought two. Um, bought one in February. I don't know where the other ones are, but yeah. And I was expecting a move because once when a stock trades in a long pattern like this. Um, you know that that can happen when it just kind of consolidates for a long time it's liable for a move in a certain direction the ceo of rocket mortgage i guess kind of like saved detroit um the housing market there was crazy uh this, this is a huge company people calling it <laughs> bump and dump and stuff yeah i don't think it's gonna i don't think it's gonna sustain a hundred dollars a share wherever it gets to but um this is definitely not a pump and dump this could be a gamma squeeze happening followed by a short squeeze followed by this X dividend people get it. I mean, there's so many different catalysts for this thing going up right now. Um, so yeah, so in the long term, this, yeah, so this is crazy. This is, I mean, this is why I don't, I don't really have these kind of plays in my shares because I want this to be steady. So this is basically the play from Rocket, but I w I'm fine with this, this slower growth. Like that's what we, that's what you want in the long term, something safe. Um, it's, it's funny though, cause last month we watched my video recap, we were at 28,000 and then it dropped down to like 24, basically lost 10% last month. It's like, oh, it kind of sucks. Nothing you can do. A lot of that's cause Tesla and Nasdaq's been selling off. And then, <laughs> so typically I'd want this in the other account, this kind of growth, and then I'll transfer the funds to this account to buy in. But this just makes it a little bit easier. Now it's already in here. So if we sell out of this and make money on it, then we'll be able to leave it there. On E-Trade, we also have, um, we've got, so I covered, I covered on these a little too early. We've got, we had five naked calls firing on Friday for $28. And these are up, uh, these are up 7,200% right now. So this is 57, $57 into 4,100 at this point. And then I sold two calls to leg into it. Um, just to get my money back, my initial investment. I think it was worth, let's see. I think I spent more than that. I spent 200 total on it. Um, but yeah, so now this is a debit spread. So basically, the max we can make on these two, this debit spreads is, uh, what? The two, 300 bucks a contract. So that'll be $600 there. And then these three naked calls, it's limitless. So unlimited amount of profit we can make on that, depending on how high it goes. Um, trying to lock in some profits on the way up, but giving myself still plenty of exposure to it. Um, so yeah. And then beyond beyond had, I guess they're going to start selling at Costco, some kind of news. I didn't confirm it, but I got up, got a few calls on that just in case. Um, rocket. Yeah, this is, this is crazy. I don't, uh, I don't think it's done. As you can see here after hours, it's, it's holding up quite well. Uh, Jimmy, I, I, it was, I was bullish on it and I am bullish on it. This could be, if you're looking at the charts, this is uh, kind of bearish. 
Um, red candles under the nine moving average. MACD's crossed over. It didn't break this previous resistance. However, this is short term technical analysis. This doesn't mean it's done or anything's over. Um, I don't think the short squeeze has happened yet on GameStop. So look on the daily, it's bullish. This is kind of like a, uh, I don't know, bull flag type thing, but it's still all over the nine moving average. MACD is still good. Um, I'm just thinking tomorrow, this will probably be kind of red. Um, we'll see it. I mean, it, after it has crazy moves, then sometimes it trades like a sort of somewhat of a normal stock for a few days. And that's when the premiums get just crushed on options. So that's when you want to buy them. Um, once it kind of trades pretty flat and the premium option premium goes down. So yeah, we're losing on uh, the calls that expire this this Friday. This was up this was up last week. This call right here that's cost ninety six dollars. This is at five hundred seventy seven percent. This was up fourteen was it yeah fourteen thousand percent last week. This was worth fifteen grand. I think that's fourteen thousand percent. This is worth fifteen grand though these two and yeah I've just held it because uh, I want exposure for this Friday and last week I didn't know if that was the end I assumed it would keep going but it didn't so um, we did we did lock in profits from last week and make, make like 15k on those so um, that is neat and then these 800s uh, these cost two grand and we're down on those so if we see a lot of price action on GameStop before Friday, these will be great. Otherwise, I'll probably just, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. See what happens. I'm probably not going to be buying into, so I bought a couple more calls today just because it was coming down and it was kind of low, but then uh, it kind of kept going down. So I stopped. I, I bought some right in here, these 800 calls for the for next Friday. So these expire on the 12th. Um, pick those up and like I said I want exposure to each week so um, basically I stopped buying more though because as my technical analysis I'm thinking tomorrow I might have might get even cheaper those calls I think they probably will so oh wait the way we were able to make 14,000 percent or whatever before on GameStop with calls with options was because um, we've been watching it from the first gamma squeeze or short squeeze or whatever you want to call it and I knew it had upside potential because I didn't think the squeeze had happened. It was holding holding this kind of range. The low is 38. And then by this point, calls were so cheap. There's no sentiment. And I, I picked up some calls this day because it had popped up. It was, already, it was like up 10% that day, which was huge. Um, but not as big as what happened here. So then once this happened, then those calls were up 40% or 40,000. Oh, I think it's 40,000. I, I have to look at the screenshot. But... Anyways, um, follow us on Twitter. I'm updating that often with uh, kind of what I'm doing and when I'm getting in and out of plays and everything like that. Um, yeah, I want to show you guys when I start mentioning Rocket. We'll say, oh, it's a distraction. It's, it's okay to make money on two different stocks. I uh, <laughs> if uh, It's called diver diversification, and this isn't even my long term. So... Uh, yeah, Rocket and GME, they don't really fall in the same category. Um, still very bullish on RKT for short and long term. Just don't have much time in these contracts. I want to make it free. So that's why I sold some of them, I guess, yesterday. Yeah, so that's when I legged into those yesterday, unfortunately. Um, so I would have been up maybe eight grand today on those calls instead of four. But that's how you that's how you play it safe, and that's how you live to fight another day in the market, is you make stuff free and not to lose money basically so we still have upside potential on those two but yeah that was march 1 so march 1 was this day no this day so it was already up a lot it was already up a lot um i saw the good earnings it sold off i was like all right this looks fine and then this day was like all right continuation i was learning about all this news about the sh i mean i knew about the short float um and i have that in older videos if you want to watch watch back let's see there was one down here too. There's March 1st again. Yeah, so this was what was crazy. Since Rocket had been trading in this range for so long, um, even though it shot up, the premiums didn't really gain value. So it had been trading this range for so long. So even though it came up here, it just wasn't enough. Sometimes you need two days of really good price action, positive price action to really move option contracts, I've noticed, um, especially if they've been in a range. So what we got here this is option uh what's up the rkt shooting up and options hardly gaining premium this thing has been in a range for so many months there's no breakout sentiment still cheap calls if anybody wants them 
I called this out yesterday. It was early, early. Um, where's my rocket claim down here? Bruce! Have one more down here. I'm trying, I mean, you guys are all GameStop fiends, so try not to give too much news on Rocket or other stuff. However, uh, if I see something, I want to mention it. So here, February 26th. Uh, I was showing the short float interest on it. Okay, also this earnings catalyst might just cause something else. Check bottom right. Short floats 38%. So this was after they had their positive earnings. It was on February 26th. Um, see, that was right here. So that, that was the bottom. That's when I was recommending. I mean, I didn't do, I don't recommend anything, but people I know, uh, family, I was like, oh yeah, you think about it long term, whatever. So yeah, right here, we kind of shouted it out. Short float interest, positive earnings, and it's gone crazy since then. Hard not to just talk about Rocket, but uh, yeah. GME, bullish on it. I clearly am. I have exposure. I've lost thousands on options where I could have cashed out if I thought it was over, but I don't think it's over. That's why I'm letting these, this option that turned $96 into 15 grand slowly turn back into $96 just in case. So there you have it. Not much else to talk about today um, for my account at least. Uh, basically, the everything I'm losing on C or GameStop right now, we're making back with Rocket, which is nice. Um, sold the UWMC call, probably sell a rocket call. So X dividends, not till Friday. So typically when there's an X dividend, it'll run up and in, into the X dividend date, and then it'll have a little sell off after, uh, there's a lot of other variables here with short squeezes and buybacks and, uh, you know, so I don't know how this is going to behave, but let's see the eighth, eighth is X dividend day. So that's what Thursday, I think. Oh no, no, wait. Seven is eight. That's Monday. Oh, interesting. I wasn't even thinking today it was a second. So by Friday, yeah, I don't know how much I'm, I might have a little exposure over the weekend. Um, I'm definitely going to have my long-term shares, so I won't get rid of these, but as far as options and that kind of thing, I'll probably be mostly scaled out by Friday. Cause I don't think, I don't think this thing will go in through next week, but I could be wrong. Um, definitely have been before. These pullbacks during the day were so funny. I was watching it on the five minute. It's like it started to pull back and then halted immediately going down. I was like, oh my goodness, no way. Came in and slowly melted up, halted again going down right here, and then halted going up. <laughs> Just shaking out all those paper hands. And if you look at the correlations, some people are like, oh, GameStop. This is why uh, you got to have conviction. You got to have a long term. Um, I mean, if you're swing trading everything, that's great, but you want to be able to feed a savings account with it. So anyways, this is 130 and this is 130 right here. So money cut retail could have been coming out of GameStop and into RKT. Some people were claiming that. I have no idea. Um, that's just pure FOMO to me. I wouldn't pull something out of here to go into there unless if something changed about GameStop. All of a sudden at 1.30 today, where you're like, oh no, the, it's been squeezed. The GameStop play has been squeezed, it's over. It's squeezed, it's been squeezed. And if that didn't happen, then why are you moving it from here to here? What's your conviction on here? And if you had a conviction on here, why did it change? You know what I mean? You play around with your emotions in the market, you're going to get burned. Um, happens to all of us, happens to me too. I get FOMO and got to fight it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Sub up, like up, comment down. Happy money sticks around. Follow us on Twitter, uh, forward slash happy money YT. And if you guys updated, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night. Peace out.